All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Salmon and Cod Playtime. I cannot wait to play with you all today. So last time we had some wet measuring cups and we talked about how to fill them and what the measurements looked like. Well, today we're going to be working with dry measuring cups. What's a dry measuring cup? Well, it's something that you would put dry ingredients in, like flour or sugar or strawberries, blueberries, anything that is not a liquid you would use this kind of cup for. Okay, it's a little measuring cup and it kind of looks like this. Well, this one that I'm holding in my hand is one cup. Okay, now these are going to be divided into four different parts. Okay, and this one cup says that it has all the parts. It's got, it was divided into four parts and it has all of its parts, so it's one cup. This is one full cup. You can put anything into this, like I said, flour, sugar, anything. And you could measure it out and then put it in your bowl. Okay? Now, this one looks a little smaller. This one is a three fourths measuring cup. And why it's three fourths is because one part down here is missing. Okay, it's smaller by one part. This is just three out of the four, which is a whole cup. Okay, so this one is just a little bit smaller. Okay, if we've got three-fourths, what do you think is coming next? Do you remember? Here we go. This one is going to be two-fourths because two parts of the original cup are missing. This is only filled two out of the four parts okay and remember if you have two out of the four parts that can also equal one half because if i put this over our full cup it only covers half the cup do you see that half the cup is missing half the cup is not full it could also be one half or you could say two fourths whichever one you like both work and both are used in recipes so watch out for that all right, and if this one was two fourths, we had four fourths, three fourths, two fourths. What do you think this one's going to be? It's going to be the smallest of all. It's the little one fourth measuring cup, and we call it one fourth because it would fill, you could put four of these in this big cup, and that would fill the whole cup. This is just one fourth of this cup. Okay, if I can get that to kind of line up, there we go. You'd have one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here. That would equal one whole cup. Okay, kind of confusing until you look at it. Once you look at it, you realize that you are kind of taken away. If I can get this to line up straighter than I have it, you're taking away one fourth every time. And that's why the little number gets smaller. Here's one fourth, two fourths three-fourths, and in this one you have all four parts. You've got one full cup. Okay, and that's how you measure with those. Very handy, very fun. This makes it very easy for if you're trying to do flour and you only need a fourth of a cup, instead of filling this cup only one-fourth of the way, you just use this. It's really easy. You just chip, 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 just kind of flop it in there. And it's really easy. All right, y'all. Thanks for playing with me today. I had a great, great time. Is that all I want to do today, or do I want to add one more thing? You know what? We are on a roll. Let's add another thing. We're playing. We're having fun. Let's add one more thing real quick. I'm not done yet. Let's talk about spoons. In cooking and baking, there are two different kinds of spoons. There's the tablespoon, which is the biggest spoon, or there's a little teaspoon, which is the smaller spoon. The big spoon has the big capital T. The little spoon has the little T on it. And that, when you see it in recipes, if they want you to use a tablespoon, they'll use a big T. If they want you to use a little teaspoon, they'll use a little T in the recipe. Okay? Now, I think this is really cool. I am Irish. My kids are extremely Irish, and we love the clovers. We love clovers. But this is just a little plain 
ordinary clover that you would see every day. It's not the special four-leaf clover. This is just a little ordinary, everyday three-leaf clover. Well, guess what? This little teaspoon, it's just a little ordinary spoon. There's really nothing magical about it or special. They don't write songs about little teaspoons. So, it's just ordinary, like this clover. It's very, very ordinary. And like this clover, this clover has three parts to it. If you had three teaspoons, that makes one big tablespoon. So if you want to know how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon, just think of the little clover. And remember the number three, the little ordinary clover. And you will know that three teaspoons go into a tablespoon. And again, if you can't remember the difference between teaspoon and tablespoon, just remember that your dining room table is a lot bigger than a teacup. And that's how you remember which one's the biggest. Your table is bigger than a teacup. Therefore, the tablespoon is bigger than the little teaspoon. Okay? And remember, three teaspoons, just like the clover, in one tablespoon. All right, that's it. You guys did fantastic. I know I'm silly, but you guys are going to remember this, and you did really great today. Thanks for sticking with me, okay? Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are Salmon and Cod Playtime, and I'm glad that you came and played with us today. All right, bye, everyone. Bye.